If you want to translate your WordPress site, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you how to add a language switcher to your WordPress site and customize it. And this language switcher I'm going to show you is part of Translate Press and it's been fully rebuilt. It's brand new. It's something worth checking out if you want to translate your WordPress site because it's super easy to use. I'm going to show you everything about it in this video. Hi, I'm Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Now let's get started. Here's an example of the old language switcher. There's lots of different settings, so it might look completely different on your site, but it's still one of the old ones. Basically, you hover over it, it's somewhere on your page, and you pick a different language, and the website is then switched to that language. And now we're gonna check out the new language switcher. To see if you have that available, it's pretty easy if you've installed Translate Press in the past. If you're gonna install it right now for the first time, you're gonna have the new switcher automatically. But if you have Translate Press installed, you've been using it for a while, if you head into Settings and then Translate Press, and then click on Language Switcher, you'll see this pop up. Legacy Language Switcher is currently enabled, meaning we have the old one. We have to click this blue button to enable the new one. If you don't see this message, make sure that you're running the latest version of Translate Press, because only the latest versions will have the new Language Switcher. I'm gonna click on Enable the New Switcher, and we're gonna check out the settings. The builder's a lot nicer. We see a preview right here. Previously, we had to change the settings and then go and check it on the front end like this. Whereas now it's all in the back end. Makes your work a lot faster. That's, that's pretty cool. The first thing you want to know is there's various ways to add language switchers. First, we're on the floating tab. We also have a short code available. You can add the short code to any page builder, any WordPress page, and a language switcher will appear where you add the short code. You can also use the language switcher block, which has been added to the Gutenberg editor when you install Translate Press. We'll check that out in a little bit. And then the menu item is adding the language switcher to your menu systems. So let's go through these one by one. Let's start with floating. We can turn off the floating switcher if you don't want it. For example, if you use the short code or the menu item, you might not want this floating switcher. Toggle this, save changes, and then go out to the front end and refresh. This floating switcher in the bottom right is gonna be gone. And that leaves you free to add that wherever you want using a short code or menu item. I kinda like the floating one, I'll keep that on. You can show the languages as a drop-down or show languages side-by-side. Side-by-side only works if you have two languages. For example, if I come back over here to general and let's just delete Mongolian and Spanish and then save, you'll see when we go back to the language switcher, we can now choose this option and they're side-by-side. -side. This option will remain grayed out if you have more than two languages. Down here we can apply presets for the design, click on apply default preset, which is this one, or you can apply the dark preset, or the border preset, or a preset that has some transparency. Or you can customize all these things on your own. Change the background color, the hover color, change the text color. It's so aggressive, I'm gonna make it blue. So there's lots of options for changing the entire design. You can add a border color and a border width. You can change the border radius. You can add animations. Watch when I hover over the switcher, it kind of animates itself up, it kind of slides up. If I turn this off, it just jumps up. It's subtle, but it's there. I like the animated one. You can choose to have flag and text size normal or large. You can change the shape of the flag, give it a border radius, you can add custom CSS, you can customize the layout on both desktop and mobile. You can position the switcher exactly where you want it to be. I prefer the bottom right. You can change the width, you can change the padding, the padding being how much space there is around the words. So if I add 50 pixels here, that's 500, that's too much. 50 is also too much in my opinion, but you can change it to be the perfect size and perfect padding for whatever you need. And the width, of course, also self-explanatory. You can change that to whatever width you want. You don't want to make it too small because then it doesn't really function. So you got to make sure it's the right width. And depending which language you have, there might be more text to fit. So if I make this the perfect width for English, that's not perfect. Let's see. Let's make it super on the line. Let's say I wanted that for the width. Then when I hover over it, Japanese is cut off. So you want to make sure that the width is set so that all the languages are readable or just choose default and then that will adjust the width depending on how much space is required. 
all automatically. You can change the flag position, or you can hide the flags. You can have full names for the languages or short names or no names and have just a flag. Lots of different ways you can set it up. Under additional settings, you can show the opposite languages. Again, only works with two languages. So if I check this, then whatever language is currently the translation is going to be, it's going to show the opposite one here. To show you what I mean, let's save this. Refresh out here. We're currently on the Japanese translation, so it's going to show English for the switcher. At least it should. And we got to turn it on. Got to enable it up here. Let's try that again. There we go. It says English. If I click on this, we'll translate to English, and it's going to say Japanese. This also only works when there are two languages. You can also show a Power by Translate Press message down here if you want. And that's all the settings for the floating language switcher. For the short code option, there's a lot of similar settings. You can customize the design just like we did for the floating widget. You can customize the layout on desktop and mobile. We have additional settings which include opening the language switcher when it's clicked on instead of hovered on. Currently you hover. If you check this box, you have to click to open it. So you can set that how you want to have it. So all those settings are pretty similar. The difference is how you make this appear on a page. So to make it appear, we can copy the short code and let's open an Elementor page. We can add it to our Elementor page editor. This one right here, edit with Elementor. You can add it to an existing container on the page or you can add a new one. You can add the short code widget. You can probably add a text widget as well, but short code widgets are designed for short codes. So I'd use that. Let's put that down below the text. Let's paste the short code right in here. There's our language switcher. Sweet. Let's publish this page and let's check it out. There it is. Super easy to use. So that's inside of Elementor. What if you want to add this to a WordPress page created using the Gutenberg editor? Also easy to do. You have multiple options as well. So let's open a page created with WordPress. Let's just make a new one and we can go right here. Click on the plus icon, look up short code. We can paste the short code right in there or maybe even easier. Look up language switcher and we can add the switcher just like that and it shows live on the page, whereas the short code just shows the short code. So you have those two options to add those to your pages. And if you're using the classic editor, I don't know why you would be, but some people still are. Inside Gutenberg, you can look up classic, and the classic widget is basically the classic editor. And then you just paste it in there and actually switched it back to a short code widget. But if you're using the classic editor, that wouldn't happen. And then you just paste in the short code and you have it on your regular WordPress page is created using the classic editor. So that's pretty easy to do. It's super nice that you have this preview over here. It makes it really easy. And the menu item option allows us to add the language switcher really easily to our menus. If we check out our menu system right now, you see it right there. What if we want to add a language switcher? All we have to do is go to, let's see, appearance and then menus. You find the menu that exists at the top of your page. Some websites have a whole bunch of menus. You'd have a drop down up here to select different ones. The main menu is all we have on this site. And we scroll down to language switcher on the left. And we have various options for adding the languages. We can choose the opposite language like we saw a moment ago. We can choose the current language. We can also add the individual languages. The way I personally would do it is if you had only two languages, I just choose the opposite language option. So when they click on it, it then switches to the other language and then the language switcher is updated to the opposite language. So people know to click on that to get that language version. Or I would choose to create a custom link and call it translate. Add a hashtag for the URL. And then I would add the different languages underneath the translate menu option. So it's a drop down menu. Let's save that and check it out. There we have it. Japanese and English. You can have a whole bunch listed in here. That's personally how I would do it. You can do it however you think is the best way for your website. 
And then once you have these translation links on your menu or in your menu, you have these options for customizing them. And we don't have a preview for these different toggles, but under floating and short code, we have the ability to customize the layout. And we have similar options here. So the flag icons position and the language names, we can change them here and see how that affects our switcher. And that'll affect the same way using these options. And the flag icons is kind of self-explanatory. The flag icons can be rectangular, square, or rounded. And that's it. Save your changes and you're ready to rock and roll. And that is the new language switcher for Translate Press. Translate Press is one of the best ways to translate your WordPress site. There's a link in the description down below if you want to check it out. It is an affiliate link. If you end up buying through that, it does not make it more expensive for you. This helps me keep making these videos for free. And it's a super easy way to support the channel. So I appreciate that. And if you got value from this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe to let me know. Next up, check out this video right up here, which is all about using new AI features in Translate Press to translate your websites automatically, really easily using AI. You're not going to want to miss that video. It can save you literally thousands of dollars in translation fees. So make sure you check that out and I'll see you there.